And I feel the river inside. If there's a full, complete surrender, uh, the trust, the lessons of trust come so fast, and it's just the transfer happens very, very quickly. And um, and I would say it's you know it can seem pretty rare, like when, when people think of like Eckhart Tolle. You know, in his park bench experience, it seems to be very rare when there's such a complete, radical transformation of consciousness to that magnificence. You know, it, it all of a sudden you're in a state of grace, and you feel everyone in that grace, and you just are so grateful you you can't even say the words. It's such a deep uh, gratitude that's there. So for me, um, it it happened to be a point in my life where. I really was cracking wide open spiritually, um, I'd say the first five years before that period of travel was when, uh, the five years when I came across the course and was using the book pretty much more like an I Ching. I would just have my question and I would open it up and get the answers over and over and over. And then I'd be so grateful for the answers that I would just keep reading on. So I read the book about eight hours a day on the average, uh, and, and just gave myself over to it. And then there came a period after that where I could hear Jesus talking to me in very friendly, casual, conversational terms, not with the things like, you know, I love you, you are love, you are, you are one with God, and those kind of things, but it was, you know, you forgot your keys, turn left, I said left, uh, you know, those kind of things, I always say, like a little bird on the shoulder. Uh, very, it was very friendly and kind, but it, this, like, this little bird knew all the answers. I mean, I mean, all the answers, down to the tiniest things. Call so-and-so, go here, go there, do this, do that, visit so-and-so. Uh, you know, it's very, very, very specific. So, I think that came after that real devotional period with the Course was, this very friendly voice that was guiding me and giving me instructions. And that really helped during those five years of travel because it was no problem. I'd wake up in the morning, okay, meditate for ten minutes, okay, get your keys, go out, we're going here, turn here, turn there, do this, call so and so. No cell phones, no emails, nothing but my worn out little Course in Miracles book and my connection to Jesus and and talk about not needing gadgets and you know iPhones and iPads and contacts and everything. I was it was all flooding at me internally and then when I began to travel people started, you know, taking little strips of paper and before we had emails and little notes on our smartphones, you know, little strip of paper oh my gosh, you've got to meet my mother in such and such a town, and go here, go there. And I had a little three-cylinder car, and the price of gas was under <laughs> under a dollar. <laughs> and so, I mean, I just had so much fun just being purely intuitive. And the miracles were amazing. I mean, every day I had floods of miracles. And it was so joyful that I just thought, I'm, not, I'm never going back to the old way of trying to figure things out and weigh the pros and the cons and evaluate and analyze. Well, I had been really good at that, so to speak, in academia and all the other th things I'd done in my life, you know, business and jobs and everything, and I just was willing to just chuck all of that out and just go totally with becoming 100% intuitive. So the magnificence exploded. Uh, it just hit me really fast. Um, even things that the world would judge as very negative things were just sparkling for me. Like I, I came, I took my first trip around the United States and, and up to Canada in 1991, and I was on the road for like five, five, five and a half weeks, and it just knocked my socks off. I mean, even a friend of mine who was, who, travel with me. She was. She thought we'd have to stop and do dishes or work at partial jobs. So we didn't really have a lot of money when we took off. And it was just so many miracles that she 
she quit all her jobs and she let go of her apartment because she just got enraptured in the same miracles that I was experiencing because it was so strong. And then the second time I actually came to Florida, I came right down along St. Augustine, Daytona Beach, and I went all the way down the coast and I was with her and um, we were driving down towards Miami to meet two people that we had never met before that had invited us and um, we called their phone, no, no answer, so I said, let's go to the beach. But right before we went down there, um, she was saying something about, we were in her car, and she was saying, well, such and such, and this is, you know, this is my car. And I said, well, actually, it's the Holy Spirit's car. You know, the Holy Spirit can do whatever He wants with it. We went down, we walked out on the beach, and we came back, and the car was gone. <laughs> and she just, like, looked at me. And she had said something about my car, and I just had said, well, it's the Holy Spirit's car. The Holy Spirit can do whatever he wants with it. But we're so much enraptured in the miracle that I just was like, nothing can go wrong. I mean, it's just, we're flowing in the miracle. We're in floods of miracle. So when the car was gone, you know, she just, we both stood on the, painted lines in the park where the car was gone and, and all of our our music our wallets our we you know we went to the beach we didn't take anything with us you know everything was gone the, the car was gone and I could I, I, she looked at me like with this like, look like oh my god what now and I said I said all things work together for good there are no exceptions and nothing you need will be denied you. And the third thought that came, and everything that seems to happen to me, I ask for and receive as I've asked. She was, took a deep breath, and we just started walking. We just, she was even, she was splashing around in the ocean, so she was like wet, walking in wet clothes in a park down somewhere in Miami. With, we didn't even know the, the people that were hosting us. It's not like you know, we even knew them. And we got picked up by park rangers, and then our friends came over, and one thing led to the next. It turned totally miraculous in terms of, of how beautifully we were cared for. We went to like a first stop was our host took us to an AA center, and they were collecting clothes for the needy. You know, it was a clothing drive at the AA center, and literally we only had the clothes on our back because the the whole thing was gone. Suitcases, everything was gone. The car was gone. And right away, uh, they said, we started, they said, go back in the back. You know, you guys look like you could use some clothes. And we went back there. This was Miami. These were like really nice shirts, nice pants, nice sandals, everything. My friend looked at me and she said, the Holy Spirit dresses you better than you dress you. <laughs> and it turned into this comedy where, you know, if the world would say that's a tragedy, you know. If you, if you, your car's gone, your clothes are gone, your wallets are gone, everything's gone. But that's the way it went. The Holy Spirit dresses you better than you do. She got a great wardrobe. We went, we borrowed a tent before we left. We went to a course group and they took up a collection. And the amount of the collection was, we went to a used, like a, a store for sporting goods and so forth, and the exact amount that was collected was the amount that a guy said, I, I would offer you a used uh, tent. So we got the tent back, which was the only thing we had borrowed. And then, eventually, after several days, the, the car came back. But the car had been stripped. And everything was taken out of the car, except for the worn out Course and Miracle books. <laughs> <laughs> they took everything but that. And I just left. I said, well, see, nothing you need will be denied to me. <laughs> we need the Course. We need the Course. <laughs> and then donations came in. The, you know, apparently down, down in Miami, they got a whole industry for, for fixing stripped cars. <laughs> we don't have that in Cincinnati. <laughs> into that and then we ended up going up the other coast, you know, the Gulf side, sharing all of our miracles 
on how everything was perfectly provided, even though the world would say that's, that's a negative thing when you have your car taken and all your possessions taken. So it just got to use as another parable. And we left all the way, we just left all the way through at how perfectly synchronized. So that's, when you talk about opening to your magnificence, those are the kind of experiences that really helped me see that the Spirit's like saying, I got your back. Just have fun, and have a lot of fun, and really trust me for everything. And don't hold back. Like when my friend looked at me, I just, those are the three ideas from the Course that came. And when they came, that's how the Holy Spirit works. We get the ideas, and then we get the opportunities to put the ideas into practice, to experientially show us that the ideas are true. That's why the Course has a workbook, and not just the text. The workbook is the laboratory, just like when we're in science, when we're in junior high and high school. We have to actually do the experiments in the lab to know that it really works. We can't just read it in a textbook, we need to actually have the experience. So that, I mean, after five years of that, that was like in 92, that was the second year of those five years I mentioned. It just continued on more and more like that. Everywhere I would go, there were miracles. Everything just opened up for me. Something tells me life can offer only love, endless and free.